if you've played rise of kingdoms for any amount of time then you know that getting your hands on legendary commander sculptures is one of the biggest challenges of the game and it never really gets that much easier which is why it's always important for you to invest these legendary commander sculptures into commanders that have longevity commanders that are meta today and are going to continue to be competitive in the meta for as long as possible and so today we're going to go over the three core marches the three best marches that you could possibly be using in rise of kingdoms that every player should be striving to complete and then we're going to be talking about how you should think about progressing past that point in rise of kingdoms now i'm also going to give you guys some more free to play suggestions regarding these different marches and i'm going to be explaining why each march is as good as it is and sort of breaking down the pros of each of these commanders that way you guys have an understanding as to why these commanders are good so you can evaluate new commanders down the line all on your own because you might be watching this video three months from now and there might be a new commander that's announced and you're wondering like is it going to be as good as the things we talk about in this video and so if you understand what makes these commanders good then you're going to understand more or less how good the next upcoming commanders are going to be of course if you want to hear that news from me when those commanders do come into the game make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so that way you don't miss anything and drop a thumbs up on the video while you're down there okay with that being said let's just jump right into this and this is in no particular order by the way I have other videos on the channel if you want to focus mainly on a specific troop type you can go ahead and check out those videos and I'll give you a little bit more guidance as to what order you might want to invest in these commanders but the first pairing that I want to talk about of course includes Nevsky okay and of course includes Joan of Arc Prime now the other day I made a community post on my channel that got 13,000 votes saying let's settle the debate who's the best cavalry commander and guys I actually don't think there's a debate I really don't think there's a debate I think the community by and large agrees that Nevsky is the best cavalry commander now this could be skewed right this could be a commander that a lot of people have invested in a long time ago and so they're very fond of their Nevsky investment and he's been good for so long that they feel like he's earned that title that could be the case right if we're talking like subjective like numbers versus numbers like could you possibly argue that like who oh Joan is better May maybe okay but why is Nevsky Joan as a combination just so dominant in rise of kingdoms and has been forever since Joan of Arc came out well let's go over this and in order to do that we have to compare Nevsky to a commander that he's often compared against which is huo right huo is the newer single target skill damage cavalry open field commander right like they both kind of fit that bucket and nevsky is still seen as the tried and true open field cav commander so why would that be well of course if you compare the active skills there's a 2700 damage factor on huo with a 50 percent march speed reduction whereas on nevsky he's got a bit of a lower damage factor it's, it's 2300 which isn't awful right that's still a very solid single target hit but the biggest difference comes in the form of the debuff here we have a 45 percent defense debuff on the target once this active skill pops now the 50 percent slowdown on huo is incredible and there are some instances where this is really really valuable but for the most part the benefit of the defense reduction as it's a debuff on the target this means that all of your other armies that are hitting that target are going to be dealing more damage to that target for the three seconds that this debuff is active and it's pretty easy to get the maximum stacks on here because it's just the number of troops surrounding the target times 15. so if you have three of your five armies hitting a target that's three troops times 15 that's that's your 45 right there and typically even if you're a free-to-play player you're gonna have three armies in the open field maybe if you're a newer player you might only have two but some free-to-play players have four or more armies in the open field right and even if you're not free to play and you are five marching it all the time well I think a lot of people play in the open field the same way and that is that they control all of their armies as a unit right they are typically always swarming down a single target it's not like you're micromanaging every single army where this army is going to attack that target and this army is going to attack that target and this army is going to no they, they typically you select all and you choose your target right and you swarm them down and so because of that a 45 percent defense reduction is absolutely massive here but then on top of that the rest of his kit is actually extremely well rounded he has a large amount of attack he has a large amount of march speed this is universal march speed that applies to any territory right not just enemy territory but any territory at all and outside of your alliance territory he gets health he gets even more health on the expertise here 10 percent chance for 30 percent for three seconds and he also gets 20 percent defense and he gets a massive amount of skill damage 25 percent vanilla and an extra 35 percent for four seconds after you use an active skill which primes his secondary for dealing a ton of skill damage and great news 
who's his secondary going to be in this case it's Joan of Arc Prime and we know that her AoE is a three target 2000 damage factor and her fourth skill lets her cast it twice in a row so the 2000 damage factor has a 60 percent skill damage bonus because of Nevsky's fourth skill and she's going to be hitting them when most likely they will have a 45 percent defense reduction on top of all the other benefits that Nevsky brings to the open field and then Joan of Arc also gives you or your nearby allies five percent more damage and 20 rage per second for three seconds which is really impressive stuff now she also has her own benefits March speed attack all this other stuff that really complements Nevsky well and so this pairing is kind of a match made in heaven now that's not the only reason that Nevsky is so good though because Nevsky having the skill tree he can basically be paired with any commander that is another cavalry commander right he can be the secondary to a huo to have just a single target nuke or you could throw Nevsky as the primary with William behind him or you could throw Joan behind him or you could throw I mean hell you could even throw the Ned behind him it might be a little bit slow but you could do it right you could put basically any cavalry commander behind Nevsky you could put Minamoto behind him if you wanted to and just give him a ton of stats and single target damage right so Nevsky basically checks every single box that you're looking for in an open field commander and the one thing he's missing is AoE and good news Joan has double AoE and so this is a match made in heaven whether you're free to play mid spend low spend high spend well Kraken whatever this is one of the best armies in rise of kingdoms and it has been for a long time and hopefully you guys can understand why that might be at this point now as far as talents go for my Nevsky this is the talent build that I always run in the open fields when I'm doing PvP I grab feral nature here this is because even though this makes you overrage sometimes meaning you might gain more rage than the cap that the game in implements it's still important because you may cast your active skills before your enemy when you first enter into combat and that is when you have the most amount of troops and so it's important that you cast that active skill as soon as possible and ideally before the enemy and feral nature is one of the ways that you can accomplish that also we grab undying fury for the extra rage and we grab emblazoned shield for 12 percent skill damage taken reduction which is amazing we have three points left over I throw them in halberd so you can deal more damage to the archers there's a ton of archers in the open field now with Herman Prime we'll talk about that later but halberd is exceptionally good this talent build I wouldn't really mess with this at all this is in my opinion pretty much perfect next we're going to talk about Scipio Prime with Liu Che this is the combination that sort of put infantry back on the map infantry was really struggling was really lagging behind the other troop types in the open field and Liu Che paired with Scipio Prime really solves that problem and the reason is because because this deals so much AOE damage it is unbelievable now here's the thing right the reason that you would do CPO Prime as the primary commander is because he has the support tree and there's there's a lot to love about the support tree so let's just get this out of the way right away okay we put two points into rejuvenate we don't put three only two because remember this rejuvenate as opposed to the skill tree rejuvenate gives you a hundred rage with only two points whereas the skill tree rejuvenate gives you 60 for three points so you don't actually need all three points in this rejuvenate otherwise you kind of waste that third point you run the risk of it just over raging we grab the emergency protection here because you have a 50 percent chance of reducing all incoming skill damage by 15 percent for three seconds you also grab burning blood on the way here which is also really nice and then you go ahead and grab a bunch of march speed in the infantry tree you grab fleet of foot you grab infantry march speed here you grab infantry march speed here and then you've got a bunch of points left over so we grab hold the line which has a 10 percent chance to take 20 percent less damage for the next two seconds there's a three second cooldown here but you might actually pop this a little bit more often because of Liu Che we'll talk about that in a second and then we have stronger body which gives you six percent health and then we put our last couple of points here and just grabbing one of each of the different stat points which is really important and so I personally feel like the support tree is just a little bit better than the attack tree on Liu Che when we are fighting in the open field because of that rejuvenate because the extra rage engine there I feel like it's just really really good there is some rage engine on the burning blood here and also obviously on dying fury but like I still I prefer the rejuvenate from CPO but also when CPO is the primary commander his active skill is going to go first which means you're going to pop a 2000 damage factor AoE and three targets are going to take 30 percent less health this is a massive debuff this is I mean health is arguably the hardest stat to get your hands on these days even with armaments and because of that it is the most detrimental stat to lose in such a large chunk and the great news is during those three seconds the enemy is going to be hit by Liu Che's 2255 target AoE which is absolutely insane okay so you are going to make Liu Che's strong AoE hit like an absolute nuke from orbit when they are debuffed with CPO as the primary commander but beyond that 
CPO has a ton of stats that he brings to the battlefield, right? He gives you so much infantry attack on top of the infantry attack that we already have on Liu Che on his third skill. And also he gives you a bunch of March speed, which you really want on any infantry, especially because he gets even more outside of territory. Then he has chance for an instant proc damage, 20% bonus health here. And you have a 50% chance to reduce incoming skill damage. Plus you get a shield, you gain 10% more skill damage, which doesn't matter for Liu Che, but there's just so much that Scipio is bringing to the field that just basically enhances everything on Liu Che's kit because he has a massive slowdown massive aoe and he has a bunch of stats that fill in the blanks like for example cpo doesn't have defense well you've got 20 percent defense here you've got even more march speed even more skill damage taken reduction it's just an unbelievable march here and if any of your enemies are taking less skill damage well great news that doesn't apply to liu che right if they have somebody like a Boudica, her third skill says that she takes 25 percent less skill damage well great news that has nothing to do with liu che his hits are still gonna hit just as hard which is really nice so all in all this march is an absolute slayer on the open field you're going to be farming kills with this in any kvk that you're in you're going to find that it works really really well and then the third march we're going to talk about here is obviously Zhuge Liang with Herman Prime I think everyone kind of saw this coming but this is just such a dominant open field march these days for archers that it's just impossible to ignore and this is probably the number one target that you want to hit when you see it in the open field because it just is it's doing so much it's doing the most honestly first of all Zhuge Liang has a five target 2000 damage factor AOE and the debuff here is crazy troops hit by the skill deal 15 percent less damage that's all damage okay and then you've got Herman Prime here who's dealing a half circle AoE it's only three targets but it's also 2000 and he is spreading two stacks of poison for to, to every target that he's hitting here okay and poison makes them take three percent more skill damage for every stack and it can stack up to 15 times and you're not going to remove those stacks at all at any point with your Herman because you're not running him with Tamiris the other thing here is that okay well this is a double AoE March that's insane right but it's actually more than that because the fourth skill here on Zhuge Liang has a three target 1500 damage factor every other skill cycle whenever the marquee effect is removed when he's expertise he starts with the effect and so your first skill cycle will remove it and deal this damage but the aoe skill damage here is insane and also he's got the skill tree so let's go ahead and take a look at this this is why you would run the Zhuge Liang primary because again just like with Nevsky you've got the feral nature you run that chance of popping your skills first and also you come up here to grab venomous sting you deal eight percent more skill damage amazing you grab a razor sharp for the extra rage and then you've got some bonus points here I just threw them in arrows knocked rapid fire and with full quiver you actually might be able to make the argument that you could move the normal damage points over to the attack points here and that will increase your skill damage even farther I think you're kind of splitting hairs at that point honestly but you know I just wanted to throw that in there but the reason that we prefer the skill tree over the support tree of Herman Prime is because you have things like tactical mastery here which gives you three percent more skill damage of all types you also have clarity which gives you a six percent bonus to all skill damage for six seconds after an active skill you also have heraldic shield so you take six percent less and you have all for one which gives your secondary commander six percent more skill damage as well so there's just so much bonus damage as well as the rage engine on this tree that it's just it's a better open field choice than the support tree even though the support tree I think is probably a little bit more tanky this is just a this is just a better build in my opinion but on top of all of that Zhuge Liang has a 50 percent chance to remove control effects like silence from Guan Yu or disarm or heal immunity you also get 30 percent archer health which is insane 20 percent skill damage an occasional massive bump in your attack and a lot of the stats that Zhuge Liang doesn't have you'll find on Herman Prime you'll see he has 20 percent attack 20 percent defense and 15 percent March speed and that March speed is very important here it's just a it's just a smidge higher than Boudica Prime who was the previous uh, you know best pair for Zhuge Liang but then on top of that Herman Prime gives you 20 percent bonus AoE skill damage with a defense reduction here and you have a 10 percent chance of dealing another smaller AoE it's just unbelievable how good this commander is and then eventually as you apply more stacks over time you're going to be popping your active skill again now, this isn't as good as the double proc of Joan of Arc's skill for example but it's still nice value that you're going to get over time so there's no question in my mind that these are the three best and sort of must have pairs that you either should be using or should be working towards in rise of kingdoms in 2024 but if you're a free to play player 
what are some things that you can do like let's say maybe you've got you know part of these commanders built but you're not fully there yet like what can you be using instead in case you need a little bit of filler okay well if you've still got a 5551 william lying around that's much cheaper than the joan of arc prime depending on the skill distribution right you could get lucky with joan but you could run something like that the william would be a little bit cheaper also you can run mehmed at 5511 or 5515 with the relic that he has and you could put that pretty much i mean i wouldn't say anywhere but you could put that behind your nevsky or you could put that behind your cpo prime or i guess you could put that behind your liu che as well i think that would be perfectly fine if you put it behind your zhuge liang you're gonna have a really bad time because it's gonna be really slow even though it theoretically would be good but the double relic here on the med is just so insanely good 30 percent health and 10 percent skill damage this is good for literally any skill damage commander in the game it's just one of the best relics in the game by far right troop health is so hard to come by to just slap 30 percent on anyone is great plus the rest of his kit is universal because he is a leadership commander so it doesn't matter who he's paired with what troop type no matter what they're going to get 20 percent attack and 20 percent skill damage here plus he's got a small aoe it's not it's something crazy but it's still a five target aoe which is pretty nice beyond that if again you're a free-to-play player you might have a 5511 martel which you might be able to put behind either cpo or behind liu che if you have one or the other you could try something like that again with the relic this is also one of the best relics in the game 35 percent attack and 10 percent health that's very very tanky when you consider that he's already got at 5511 15 percent defense 15 percent health so that's gonna bump it up to 25 percent health and then he just gets 35 percent attack on top of all that which is really nice he's got the bonus counter attack damage here the 30 percent bonus to damage plus the shield very very universal kind of you could just slap him behind any infantry commander and just add some tankiness to that commander and you don't need them to be expertise now the expertise does give you a really nice march b bonus which you really love for infantry but that's going to be quite a while before you actually get that as free to play also if you started playing the game back in like july and pyrus came out around then maybe you've got a 5511 pyrus it's unlikely i don't even have that and i've opened many gold keys i've gotten probably more gold keys than most players i only have a 5111 pyrus but you know if you're watching this video six months from now perhaps you have a pyrus in a better state you could run pyrus uh well really you would want to run him behind a a, a luce i think that'd be a great pairing but if you don't have the luce for whatever reason of course you can run him behind your cbo prime as well so there's lots of different free to play options that you could do here and then finally you also have ethel flip you're going to get ethel flood for free as a free to play player you're going to get her from the expedition over time and i know she doesn't get a lot of love these days because she is kind of old she's a leadership commander she's a peacekeeping commander right she's kind of squishy there's a lot of things that are better she does have a five target aoe but it's only 800 right but the thing with ethel flood is if you can hide her behind somebody then this debuff is actually kind of crazy i mean it's a 90 percent reduction in their stats right 30% attack, 30% defense, 30% health. It's kind of insane. It's only for two seconds, but it's still really, really solid. But you also have to remember she has the double relic and it's universal. So no matter who you put her behind, they're going to get 15% March speed, which is really valuable. I mean, we've seen like with commanders like Zhuge Liang, they need the March speed. And we talked about how Herman Prime's 15% is okay. And I mean, here you go. This is 15%. This is the same amount of March speed that you would get from Herman Prime. This is more attack than you would get from Herman Prime. Now, there's lots of things that Herman Prime does that are much better than Ethel Flood, but like in a pinch, like you could try it. You could slap it there and it, it would be faster, at least than a Boudicca Prime, right? And then of course, if you picked up YSG in the early game, you know, maybe he's 5511 or something like that. It's not ideal. You definitely would want the expertise there, but he also has the double relic you could use him as well so while i don't typically recommend expertising him anymore if you did happen to pick him up maybe you like made a mistake and you got him by accident right or you got him 5511 and then you just gave up like maybe that's possible you know you could use him as well you could put him behind a herman prime for example or i mean you could put him behind juge leong but it's gonna be really slow so be really careful with that and then of course if you are a low spender or a medium spender or even a whale right who's just starting to play the game minamoto is a thing right you could run minamoto behind your nevsky um when you first get into season of conquest and that army's gonna hit a single target like an absolute truck there's a really nice debuff on the fourth skill from minamoto even at one it's okay but the rest of his kit's solid and again one of the best relics in the entire game here 60 percent of stats 30 percent defense 30 percent attack it's it's just going to really enhance whoever he's with right plus he's got the I think 20 percent attack and a little bit of March speed on his kit by default on the second skill so yeah overall uh still very usable for low spenders again at five five one one this third skill doesn't do anything in PvP the fourth skill is nice at just one and you could do that I think in US dollars I think it's like 27 or 30 dollars something like that 
for 5511 and that gives you something to use in the early game and then a little bit of an easier transition into late game season of conquest okay now let's say you've already got these three commander pairs you're saying omni what do i do next right well as i've talked about in the past week or so on this channel we talked about the fact that i would expect in probably may we could be getting a new set of cavalry commanders and I think it's important to see what those are right now if you're you know days away from entering kvk and you've got a thousand sculptures to blow then i would say perhaps you would consider something like huo with maybe a 5551 william that would be a really solid fourth march that you could work on for now if you need something right like today if you can wait i think you should wait and that's not to say that huo is a bad commander but there could be something that is just exceptional that is just unbelievable now between huo and william which one do i think will be kicked off the totem pole first probably william right probably william and in that case you could run something like this or something like this right those are some pairs that you could try if you really wanted to just get huo on out on the battlefield with something else behind him and then you would save your sculptures for whatever the next cavalry cycle is and if it sucks well great news you could just come back to william and you can use william for another six months or whatever the case is until we see another cavalry release maybe uh, who knows how long it'll be after may but that's kind of the way that i'm thinking about this right now if i were a new player kind of in these shoes thinking like okay what do i do next if you haven't done the hua william yet maybe hold off especially if you're low on sculptures maybe hold off just see what the next calf cycle is it might have something insane it might be a nothing burger so we are kind of in limbo but if you don't have these three armies already built already then I would recommend that you guys go ahead and start to work on them I think that you're probably not going to regret any of these investments honestly unless by some miracle the next cavalry release is an unbelievably just god level of power creep that just puts nevsky in the dust which would be a game changer to be honest with you unless that happens i think you're gonna feel really good in all these investments for probably the next year i mean like these are just again unless the power creep is just unheard of working towards these three you'll be in a really good spot anyway guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below what you think about these three armies do you think that huo is better than nevsky some people are some people are saying that some people think that if you micromanage him he's better than nevsky i'd love to hear what you guys think remember i think the the debuff here is what is what separates them not just the individual commanders but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace